Hey folks, it's been a little while and I sound a little bit different, but not for this reason at the moment. Uh, I had to fly to the other side of the country for a conference and ended up with a spicy cough. So I've been down and out. Sorry for the delay. I uh, thought though, whilst I can squeeze some words out, I'll talk about what just arrived in the mail. Now, you all know I've had issues with cameras, obviously, but the audio is also an issue at times too, especially in loud or windy environments like uh, on my other channels when I'm in the workshop or in some of the gaming because it's quite hard to actually uh, get my mic in a good spot with how everything's currently set up here. So I ordered this uh, Rode Wireless Go 2 the other day. It was, where was it? It was uh, Amazon Black Friday Special or eBay Black Friday Special. 369 down to 286. So I really can't complain. Now I'm just moving around a little bit as I do this because the camera is in front of me, as you can tell from where my hands are coming from. Uh, but spec wise, this will give you a good idea of how it changes as well. Spec wise, it's a dual channel wireless, so you can have two of the transmitters to one receiver. Uh, it has 128 bit encryption, so multiple units paired together can't be affected by anything else. They use 2.4 megahertz, sorry, 2.4 gigahertz, so they reach pretty far and they say up to 200 meters crystal clear line of sight, which is actually pretty good. They have a USB C output and a 3.5 mil TRS input. They also come with three cables. They come with the 3.5 mil cable. They also come with the USB C to Lightning, uh, USB C to C, of course, and USB C to Type A. So you can plug it into anything. Uh, they basically designed it Apple and Android compatible as well. So you can plug this thing straight into your phone and dump all the audio to that. Now it does onboard recording, it has about 40 hours of digital memory built into the recorder. It then has the ability to have flexible gain control, including a safety channel. So you can have automatic gain control on one channel, the safety channel can be your default recording. So if it happens to clip or you've got the settings wrong, you still have the safety channel, which is the raw audio data. So a little bit of built-in smarts, which is pretty handy. It has an inbuilt lithium ion battery, which is rechargeable, a USB-C of course, it gives you up to seven hours of battery life. There are some specs on the back here as well, which we're getting into. It's designed and made uh, in Australia, which I quite like. Rode is actually quite a good company. Heaps of podcasters use them. And it's available in a single set, which is what I got here, but you can also get a dual set, which is a little bit more expensive, or you can of course buy another transmitter later on. And it comes with the set, fur windshields, uh, this one says two USB-C cables. That's interesting. The online specs say three USB-C cables, but I don't care. I've got them lying around. They are 3.5 mil cable. So they call them an SC20 and there's an SC5, but it's just USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to uh, type A. And that's the 3.5 mil standard TRS cable. And it comes with a little carry pouch too. Now, I did some research before I just jumped in and bought this online because I've seen them a fair bit. I've seen them on Jetlag the game. I'm pretty certain Tom Scott uses them, some other YouTubers. And I did some research and I thought, yeah, they're, uh, they're well reputed and it's a fairly good price, so I might as well get one and upgrade my audio. What I'm going to do now is unbox this and we'll have a look at it. I don't know if there's a better way to do that than what I did. I feel like I got something wrong, but that's close enough. So, little pouch, stock standard, feels like neoprene. Um, some delicious gels to chew on later. Don't chew on them, I shouldn't have to say that, but Americans might be watching this. Then we've got the good bits here. So we have two little furry covers for it, which look like they clip straight onto the microphone port. Now, um, this can also record through its microphone port or through, oh, let's see if we can bump that brightness up a bit. That's a bit coarse off where you're gonna do that. There we go. Uh, so you can record through the built-in microphone port or you can use a 3.5 mil as well. And I'll get into that in a minute. So this looks pretty straightforward. You got a little removable hopefully a removable clip on the back. So you can clip this straight onto your shirt. So that's your shirt, you just clip it on there. Um, it's got a little bit of weight. And these furry, oh, little fairy things, not fairies, have a pretty solid clip on connection. Oh wow, that clips on really well. That's, that's quite excellent. There is the old road button on the bottom to turn it on and it does not appear to come with any charge. All right. Let's have a look at the transmitter. So, sorry, receiver. Uh, USB-C, terrace out. You've got the gain control buttons here, so how many channels you want, and let's just zoom in, is that gonna, ooh, that's deep. Yep, so there you see a bit better. Um, you can see you've got your TRS out, your three point, uh, your USB-C, your clip on the back, road button to turn on and off, 
nothing on that side but branding and you can control whether or not you want the what i think is one or two channel and whether or not you want the gain which will show on the front now i'm guessing this one also isn't charged nope so lastly then let's have a look at the cables because we'll need to use these so that's a pretty decent quality looking cable there and then we have yeah usb-c oh, i've got two usb-c to usb-a cables that's strange i've got plenty of usb-c to usb-c laying around anyway so I'm gonna go put these on charge and then we'll come back and we'll keep going. All right, we're back at it now and I've got a bit more sussed out. So I forgot to say before as well uh, that with the fluffs, I didn't even notice. You can see on there, there is actually little instructions that show you how to turn it to clip it on and off. So if you can get the fluff lined up right, there's a little bit fiddly. Um, yeah, there's little notches there that you might be able to see. It's a bit dark. Uh, the notches line up, there we go. Now. These things, uh, you can also get different colored clips for them and then you can tell which is which. And I'm really not sure what this um, 13 they gave me means either, but whatever. So to get started, if we turn them on, they do usually come prepared, it seems. But what I did, hold the button for three seconds to turn it on. I think that's on. I was having battery issues with this one, which is why it's got less charge. All right, that's definitely on. So if we hold the uh, pairing button on the right here for three seconds, it'll go into pairing mode. Yep, there we go, it's pairing. And then if this one is on, there we go, we hit the O button once and it should pair. There we go, that paired. Um, the instruction books are pretty full on. So now that it's paired, this button essentially does uh, on off with three seconds. Uh, pairing mode and then if need be it also now that's connected is a marker this is where it gets interesting though if we have a look at this you can see a few things you can see there's only one line across the top not two that's because I've got it working in merged mode so it's only going to be using one receiver you can also see there is a little blue graph at the very top left there oh, let's see if we can get a better view of this there is a very little graph there that means that I've activated the uh, backup recording. Now the recording actually happens in the transmitter, but what this means is that it's recording two channels left and right, and one of them is 20 dB below, just in case something starts clipping out or who knows what's going wrong. Um, this battery is very low. You can also see it's set to always record mode. So this is recording as long as it's turned on. You can also set it to backup mode, in which case it only records when it's paired. So that way, even if you forget to hit record on your AV equipment, this thing's still taking a recording. I've got an always mode because that's how I use it. Uh, when it's on backup mode though, you can also change it to compressed. The other functions here is you can see, if I can get that to adjust. All right, not quite, but we'll go with it. So on the bottom here, this first left one is also going to be your decibel adjustment. You can see that it's going through, I think, minus, uh, minus 12, minus 18, minus 24 or something like that. And minus 12 is the default in the middle. You can then use the channel selection. So if I use this one to select the channel, which is one, two, or none, it's either adjusting the gain, or if the channel selected, it's muting that one and then unmuting it. You can also hold them both to split it back into two modes. You can see now it's only showing one there and it's not doing the backup recording. That icon's gone, but merged mode instead of split mode and we've got our backup recording there uh lastly you can change this button to do a few different things um, by default though you can just see it turns the automatic backlight on or off so what i'm going to do now since this is a recording is i'm going to focus i'm going to cut over to the recording that's on this i'm going to put it on and apologize for that backlight wigging out and then if this wants to lock, we can also see now that this is recording and it's getting a decent decibel level. It's not too bad. Uh, if we did have an issue though, well, such as me screaming my head off, you can just mute it here, you can't hear me now. And uh, then that's back to recording. In the can't hear me now bit, I'm probably just gonna fill that in or would have filled that in with the audio from my camera. The other thing is it's recommended to use USB out. You can plug this end into uh, your smartphone or computer or anything like that. And then it acts as a uh, microphone input device. Using the USB-C connection, 
means you get HD audio instead of standard deaf audio, but it also then means that you've got the 3.5 mil free. So you can then use the 3.5 mil to monitor, which is kind of neat and handy. So if you've got any sort of uh, ear buds or something like that, that you can plug into it, that would work really well. You're gonna get some wires tangled, but definitely a good feature. Now I'm also moving around again, but this should sound a lot more clear, even though I'm nowhere near the camera now because it's clipped onto my shirt. I do have a lapel mic for it that pairs perfectly as well. Autumn, when that arrives, I'll probably do a quick video on that. But hopefully that all makes sense. I would recommend firmware updating them first in Road Central. Road Central is where you turn on all the extra features. So that will allow you to enable the safety channel, set finer grain control, enable onboard recording, does the firmware updates, changes the battery, uh, the button functions, and also does the factory reset. In my case, I also factory reset them just to be safe. So I'm gonna take this off now and put it back down. Well, that might have been a bit loud. And we can hear the difference when it's a little bit further away from me and the mic's pointing away. And now, I switch back to my phone audio. And the Oppo speaker is meant to be pretty good, but this will give us a good idea of the difference. And then we'll do a third comparison when the uh, lapel mic arrives. So thank you for putting out with my croaky voice. Hopefully I cut all the coughing out without uh, leaving any in for you to enjoy. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Ask any comments or questions if you want to know more about how these work too. Um, I've just got it. So this is new to me, but so far I'm pretty impressed. See you.